Hey people, I'm fixing to give y'all the, the key of life. This is the most important symbol in, in Egypt of all time. It's the most important symbol. It's, uh, it's on most every wall in Egypt. Uh, all the gods have it. Uh, all the, the kings have it. The, the dogs, it's the, uh, it's the, it's the, it's the key of life and it's the key of death. And, uh, and it has several meanings. And we fix to go over all of them. And when we finish with this, you're going to know more about Egypt than all the Egyptologists in the world. So they're usually made of brass. And that's because it was first a tool, like like most all the, of the hieroglyphic language. It was all tools with a purpose, with a use. And that's how they got several meanings out of the words. And so like uh, all the sailors' tools, you know, sailors were the proudest. And they would have to have a tattoo of their tools on their, on their arm. And the sailors usually where the money was. When the sailors come in town, everybody went to sell the sailors something. They knew they had a pocket full of money. So the goldsmiths would would create, fabricate things that the sailors liked. So everything has meaning and you have to look closer into it. But this isn't just an anchor. This is a called a fouled anchor. And it means that the, the anchor line has got caught up in it. And it's not holding like it should. It's not anchored in the bottom. You're dragging anchor because your, your line's caught at the wrong end. And you're dragging it sideways. You've got to be tied here in order for this anchor to dig in. And so what it means is you're not anchored down. You're a nomad. You're, you're traveling. You're not married. No ties. So at first thought, you would see that this ankh and this anchor are very similar. It would make you think that this is the ankh part and this is the R down here that's, that's missing on the ankh. But uh, this wasn't the ankh. The ankh is its, is its verb. The, but the name of this object would be the, the, a noun. All these... All these images have different meanings, and depending on how it's being held is is what it is which end which end they're holding depends on whether it's a noun or a verb. How it's being held has everything to do with what this is so let's start here at ancient pages. they got all this summed up although. They don't have a clue. They got a bunch of bunch of clues here for us. But the Ankh is a mysterious ancient Egyptian symbol with many meanings and unknown history. We fix and cure all that. So just as a symbol of Christianity has become the cross known in several variants and before it was a fish sign, so is the Ankh symbol of the ancient religion of Egypt. The Ankh is the, the cross, is sometimes called the key of life. And so the many interpretations of the Ankh. Some interpret this symbol according to its two parts. The oval shape symbolizes eternity of living, living deities, and the cross that comes out of it is continuation and extension. And so this is the, the feminine part and the masculine part. In Egyptian hieroglyphs since the Old Kingdom period, the Ankh symbolized life, but not the life, this normal, ordinary life we think of. The ancient Egyptians associated the Ankh with the spiritual life, the life of the, the soul, the, the dead, that most of us do not even think about in our dead existence. The Ankh is also subject of an, other interpretations. It combines two forces of life, the male and feminine symbols of Osiris and Isis. It is union between heaven and earth and unification between the feminine and masculine principle. And so this is the symbol of, of the 
breathing the life into creation, the, the life into the nose. So this is Sekhmet holding the Ankh, and, uh, and this looks like the older Ankh, this looks like the, the first tool, and Isis with the Ankh depicted in, in the tomb walls of Nefertiti. Nefertiti, that's the sister of Isis, usually has the crown that looks opposite of Isis. They're the uh, the the two sisters of the the Dexter and Sinister, the right and left, the good and evil. It was also a symbol of fertility, as as the signs loop was associated with the woman's womb. Later, the Ankh had been given a magical meaning and it was believed it was possessed mystical vital force. And so the Ankh does have some superpowers. We're going to see them. Mystics and enthusiasts of secret knowledge in 19th century and even the 20th century New Age movement considered the Ankh as a powerful symbol of prosperity, health, good fortune, and protection against defeat fall, total destruction. That's a clue right there. Protection against defeat and fall. Ankh was associated with many Egyptian deities. There are many depictions of the, of the Egyptian deities holding the Ankh, and it's usually most all of them. They, they all hold it somewhere. Uh, Matt, the goddess of truth, is holding the Ankh in her hand. However, the goddess Isis most often, most often seen holding it. Also, Atom, the, the god of the sun. And sometimes he got 20 of them, one on each ray. And uh, warrior goddess, Sekhmet warrior goddess, as well as goddess of healing, were often depicted with the Ankh. And like I say, Ankh, it's not an Ankh. Ankh is what it does. Ankh is the verb. There are also representations of the pharaoh who stands between the gods and holds the Ankh in his palm. There's, there's three different ways to hold it. In this case, the sign emphasized the pharaoh's divine nature. Ankh decorated walls of Egyptian temples. Egyptian tomb paintings and other art, the Ankh appears frequently as a symbol of imperishable vital force. The Ankh was painted on the walls of temples, stele, and freezes of objects, especially near the feet, to provide divine protection to the dead. It often appears at the fingertips of God, Goddess, and the image, and that it represents the deities of the afterlife, conferring the, the gift of life on the dead person's mummy. Numerous depictions show symbolic combination of water and air and scenes when a god that holds the Ankh before the king's nose, giving him the breath of life. That's the, the god breathing air into Adam. Or when a stream of water forming the Ankh runs over the king during ceremonial purification. The Ankh is also known in, as the Egyptian cross, or, or the Kru Ansada, the, cro, the Crux Ansada which in Latin means cross with a handle. And I'm going to dispute that handle. That's the cross and sada. And sada is, is the crossover, the, uh, a bridge or a port or somewhere to cross at. It's the place of crossing, Ansada. The light on, the light crossing. And, uh, and it was seen here on on both sides of this of this seal of uh, Hezekiah. I'm not going to take the time to dispute that right now, but this Hezekiah starts with an L. Egyptian Christians adopted this cross, but this was this was 500 years before Christianity. When the Christians came to Egypt, the, the ancient Egyptian symbol of the Ankh was taken over by the fourth century. Coptic Christians and their church adopted the Ankh as its unique form of the Christian cross because of its cruciform shape. So interestingly, the, the Ankh symbolized life and accompanied, accompanied by a two-winged sun 
and wings turned downward was found depicted on the impression of the royal seal of King Hezekiah 727, 7, 700 B.C. And that was all, that was unearthed in uh, in 2015. It's a it's a little bitty seal. This is only uh, one centimeter. It's like uh, it's like half a dime. So the Ankh is a good amulet, but not for everyone. The Ankh is suitable for amulet for those who wish to demonstrate their spiritual rather than their religious beliefs. And yeah, you'll see that a lot. Uh, people with the Ankh tattoo and more more spiritual than religious. Otherwise, the Ankh is the tribute of the god of moon, the hidden one, king of the gods, one of the most powerful gods in Egypt. It was frequently carried by Egyptians as an amulet, sometimes accompanied by two other hieroglyphs symbolizing strength, health, and ancient Egyptian mirrors were often shaped as the Ankh. The, the mirror is is given it's the same hieroglyph as the Ankh when they say mirror it's a it's a Ankh this universal symbol is accompanied and influenced humanity in all ages and still continues to influence modern people today the Ankh is is one of many important ancient Egyptian symbols it's the most important we're fixing to, we're fixing to figure out what it means right now so the onk and the mirror were the same hieroglyph, and this is why for thousands of years they kept shaping the mirror the same way. And it's not because you don't look in a mirror and see your onk. It was, it was never called an onk. It was, uh, it was made brass because it was a, use it on a boat. It was like a deck fitting. You know, you have, you have cleats and, and chalks and ballers to tie the boat down and so this is a this is called a t-bit this is a bollard that's on a pier and you just loop a rope over to tie your boat on and this would be a t-bit you run figure eights around there to tie it off and, uh, and it'll run through a chalk opener, a closed chalk, or a bull nose out the side of the boat. And this bit will be down on the deck, and they'll use it to tie off on. And so, uh, the onk was called the eye bit. It, uh, and it's it's because it had an eye, and this was a bit. And it was uh, it was used as a tool on the boat for for binding down. That's where your word "onk" come from, like hunker hunker down when a storm's coming. You you tie everything down. You get low. You hunker down. It's where your word "anchor" come from. Hunker, anchor, onk. And so "onk" is the the verb. And. Uh, but the name of it is called an eye bit. And that's where this that's where this mirror comes from. It's spelled O B I T. So we look at it this this ancient meaning chart and it's the the eye bit is the O, the I in. The O. And it means to see. And then the B means in. And then IT means it, same as it does today. And so that's what you do in a mirror is you obit, you see in it. You see in it. And uh, and so a I bit is used as a deck fitting, but not to see in it, but to onk something. So this down. is one I made out of steel I use. So let's say I had finished this job here and I had to get all these ladders and trash off the job. And uh, I don't have sides on my trailer. I don't want stuff sliding over and rubbing on my tires. 
So uh, I put this little line here and throw it over. And on this side, I, I attached another line. And I would put this, this onk in this loop here. Pass this through. And this, this doubles my strength. This, and so now when I pull on this line here, I can get a, I can get this tight. I have, if a storm was coming, I would have to tie things down. Anytime you're at sea, you know, you expect rough weather. So you would have holes like this on the bulwark on the boat. And you could just drop this off wherever you needed it. And this way you don't, you can take them out and you don't have things to catch on lines and, and fishing gear. But then when you need a tie down, you just drop this in that hole and that gives you a place to, to tie a rope to, to tie something off. So it doesn't get fall around in a storm or in just rough seas. So that's how a sailor would use it for tying down. And uh, and that was the gods, was the, the sailors. You know, they had all the money and they were, they were bringing in the goods. Everybody loved to see when the boats come in. And this other use here was uh, was from protect against protect against defeat and fall, and that's where uh, a rock cutter and sailors would also use it. This bosun's chair I made out of this strap, and it's just this uh, Spanish bowling. Let me show you how to do it with this rope. It's uh, it's easier to see. Let's get a loop and a line like this, and fold this up, and let these two cross, and then fold these under. take this and put it in this loop take this and put it in this loop you just pull those tight and that's going to give you something to put your legs in that says Spanish bowling and you can hang on this one line if you're, if you're scared you can leave this line longer and tie it back around your waist legs here and tie that around your waist. <clears throat> but that's all that is. I tied the ends together with a double bowling. So don't try this at home. I'm gonna stand on top of this ice chest. And I'm gonna pass this loop through here. I'm gonna put this camera up, maybe you can see it. I'm gonna pass this loop through. Hook it here. And so that's gonna allow me to control my descent with one hand and have one hand to work with. So with just one hand, you can control your repel very easily. 
go down and clean the sides of the boat. Ooh, ah. Good to throw another loop on there. Get a little more control. Lock it up if you want to stop and work. That's the, that's the power of the hump. It, uh, every, every tree surgeon. Every, every tree surgeon or uh, our window washer should have one. So this is a mirror here. You can see that the it, it's not the same color behind it. It's not an open loop. It's a mirror. That's death looking in the mirror. What you're looking at is the the spirit, the what they call the life. And the life is the death. You can see this is a, a mirror here. And then you can see through the hands in here. It's not a mirror. This is an eye bit. Neither one of them's an onk. This is an eye bit. And this is a mirror. This is an eye bit. Depends on how they hold it. The eye bit. The key of life. So the reason the Egyptologists can't read the the writings on the wall, why their their stories come with all these crazy gods and stuff. And they have all these crazy names. is because they can't sail. You have to understand how to use the tools. Before you can understand how to read. The hieroglyphs. You have to understand what these tools are used for. You got to milk a cow. And you got to sail. You got to learn to read the stars. And you got to plant. You got to hoe the garden. So that's going to be uh, that's going to be my next one. I found that I found this here. This is the story of the the first Passover, the first thirteen lines of the first Passover, and we can read all this up. This will be my next movie. So here's that I bit in Exodus thirty two fifteen right here. O B I T, the I bit to see in it, and you can see how they they try to interpret, but grew fat, Jeshurun. And kicked, you grew fat, you grew thick, you are obese. And he forsook God who made him and esteemed scornfully the rock of his salvation. You know, the word salvation is always real close to Jesus. I S O T U. So, what this really says is the wise man, his run. And his run means he's king. Just I S R U N to make consume first is is the king, the, to make sir win, when when you're the king, the wise man his run, to make boot and and kick, but it, that's that's that don't mean kick that means that means to make boot cement, and kicked you grew fat it means to make your boots heavy. Means I'm staying right here. There's cement in my boots, and I'm the wise man. It's my run, and my boots are heavy. My boots are full of cement. I'm going nowhere. Seeing it gives seat with this the will as who win in bind cross where make so too. The, the win and bind, the cross wear, makes so too. It's, it's up to me. It's up to the, 
up to the king. So here in, in the New Testament, John 1.1, 1, 1, it, it starts with, In the beginning was the Word, but the Word was Logos. In, in arch on sea, the logo. In arch on sea, logos. In the archon to see logos. And these are the logos. All these... All these writings are logos. Not spoken words, but they're logos. Same as logos today. They're not spoken. They're designs. And this is the most important one. You'll find it on every wall, pretty much. You can't get away from the Ankh in, in ancient Egypt. It's, it's everywhere. And so the, the most important power of this symbol and any of the symbols is is the, the language, the knowledge of the language. And it means to see in, to see in it. And so on ancient maps this is a this is a hieroglyph that means dam. Dam. And that's what it is. It's it's the dam that shuts the lights out. You close your eyes and shut out the light. And this so Isis and Nephthys, this is your left and right side. This is this is your dexter and your sinister. The dexter is the gods talking in your right ear, and the sinister is the devil talking in your left. And oh monkey is thoth. It's thought. The thoughts up in there. And it's saying Oh, bit to see in it to see in it and that's right there on your pineal gland on your third eye and they're trying to tell you to, to see in it to see in it the spirits in in the mirror the 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 life the key of life is is the death and you have to kill all the life you know it Go into meditation and try to shut down everything. And this is where you'll end up right here. This aisle open up. Alright, I think everybody gets this. Uh, I'm going to post this up on Facebook again. It, it works real easy. So if you're watching this on Facebook, uh, check out my channel. I'll, I'll leave the link here. Check out my YouTube channel. I got a lot more. And if you're on YouTube, find me on Facebook and get it get it log get it logged somewhere, cause uh, they're liable to start shutting a lot of these YouTube channels down that that can't bring any profits. The, anything that uh, anything that's not fit for advertisers, they're gonna start shutting it down. And I'm gonna be searching. I'm trying to get on on Brighton now. And I'm going to try to get a page up there soon. If anybody's interested in a life-size onk, uh, maybe about 8 inches, 3 inch loop, 2,000 uh, pound working load, let me know. And I got a buddy that's got a foundry and I'll see if I can get a deal on a mess of them. Alright, good day.